Hello and welcome to another Sonic Lab. It's been a, quite some time since we've done one of these. That's because we've been busy with our super booth uh, at home or home edition. Hope you got to check those out. And now we're back. Normal service will hopefully be resumed. And today we're looking at the Sequential Pro 3. This is the new uh, flagship mono, uh, obviously it's got three voice paraphonic, from Sequential, formerly Dave Smith. Uh, if you remember, Yamaha very kindly gave uh, Dave Smith the Sequential moniker back, so that's what they use now. In fact, you get to see it in all its lovely fonty glory. So this basically is the um, standard version. There are two versions of the Pro 3. Uh, this one is like I say, standard. There's another one uh, which has a tiltable front panel and wood end cheeks and it's just a bit more fancy looking, but essentially they're the same thing. And the same thing is this. Three oscillators, two of which are VCOs, that's voltage control oscillators, and you can tell the difference. I know some of the older Dave Smith and sequential stuff had DCOs and these really VCOs and you you can you can tell I mean in my opinion and not that's not normally something I'd comment on but when you hear it you just go mm, oh yeah okay uh, anyway they're the first two are exactly the same uh, they have a wave that moves between a uh, triangle through to square and a shape mod and then the third oscillator is a wavetable uh, digital oscillator which has 32 wave shapes including some just regular analog ones then we move across to the next part and this is the three-way filter. This has got three filter circuits in it. This is a four-pole OTA fully resonant, a four-pole ladder filter, which is a Moog style filter, and a state variable two-pole OTA uh, with the sort of classic Oberheim uh, sweep between low pass through notch and high pass, and then there's a little band pass. Uh, it's also got a separate drive in there, so you can add a bit of extra gr grit to the filter, and it does change the resonant character quite a lot. Then we've got four envelopes, two auxiliary envelopes, a fixed filter envelope and a fixed amplitude envelope, both that can be switched with velocity sensitivity. There's a 16-step sequencer, uh, and a 16, which has 16 tracks, uh, you can also chain up to four of these patterns together uh, to create, what's that, 64 steps, uh, and clock divide, and there's also an arpeggiator. Uh, coming back over here, we've also got the dual effects engine, which is familiar to a lot of people who've been using Dave Smith and sequential stuff. Uh, modulation matrix, the modulation matrix, in fact, is 32 steps. Uh, 32 slots rather, uh, with some fixed modulation ones as well. And then over here we've also got th three LFOs and a drive circuit. Uh, basically this is designed to be a kind of like state-of-the-art monosynth uh, with a lot of kind of possibilities and it really does actually have a lot of possibilities but it's not too unfamiliar to those who are used to the sequential slash Dave Smith way of working. So let's start with a basic patch. Now, uh, initially, I thought the only way to do that was go global and then scroll down to the basic patch, but there is actually a shortcut, and the shortcut is hit the down and the latch key, and then you've got a basic program. You can have that one for free. That's a tip that you only get when you read the manual. And we've got, we're listening to a single oscillator, plus or minus, I think that's, that looks like 700 semitones, so what's that? That's probably a fifth. got a nice amount of girth to it, it's quite weighty. And then we sweep through sawtooth to square and then we can modulate the wave. So we could get pulse width modulation but we can also get wave modulation which is quite nice on the, on the, on the sawtooth and also kind of interesting wobble there. These two are exactly the same. Then we have the third oscillator, which is a digital oscillator, and that starts off with basically the same saw, super saw, pulse width, triangle, sine, and then 32 wave shapes, which have re really nice interpolation. So really, I don't know how many steps there are in there. Uh, as far as we know, there's no way to add your own, but uh, who knows, maybe that's a possibility. But I, just, I, I can't really comment on that. Um, the thing about these oscillators is they're all syncable, but they will also can be routed into each other. So we can have audio rate mod routing one sync, uh, 
one signal into the other and the, the varying the shape and the shape mod really makes a difference. So if I just quickly do that, I'm just going to go source and I'm going to say oscillator uh, two and I'm going to go to destination which is uh, oscillator one and have the amount We can get you know all of that kind of ring mod slash FM mod, and we can route the oscillators into other parameters as well. So there's tons of audio rate mod mod modulation. So now uh, I'll just do another basic patch, and we'll come down, listen to the four pole OTA. That's quite a pleasing smudge, and that's without any drive start to add resonance. Quite a nice harmonics. And then if we add drive. We get that extra harmonic change which is always nice to see in a filter uh, that when you actually do hit the driver you get a, a, quite a, a drastic change in resonance and that's just on the first one. Second filter is the four pole ladder and again we'll just do a you can hear there's a different character I don't know if you can make that out but that is actually get that little bit of smudge add an extra drive in But one thing you probably didn't notice, um, this is really good, what they've done with the ladder filter, four pole ladder filter is a classic mode filter, and one of the things that I really just find aggravating, I suppose, I mean, even though it's a classic, as soon as you add any resonance, the bottom end disappears. Not so much on this guy, because what you can do, if I just take it to the close up of the screen, um, this beating is just the interference between the frame rate of the camera and the frame rate of the screen. It doesn't actually look like this, it's crispy as you like. Uh, we'll take the drive down and then we'll just go filter miscell mis miscellaneous and you can see we got ladder resonate, uh, resonant compensation. So, so if I now, you can hear the resonance just vanish, it makes the bass disappear like you would expect, but turning it back on again. It's quite not quite so pronounced, so nice to see that. All right, uh, third filter type is the two pole OTA, which is your classic. It actually works quite well in paraphonic mode, so we can actually go into paraphonic mode. Let's just get three oscillators in, uh, make them all to be sawtooth. <laughs> nice about this is we can actually modulate this low pass state, uh, the, the state variable stateness to come back to uh, single. Okay, so a couple of things about the filters. Uh, it's only one at a time. There's no series or parallel. You can't go from one to the other. You choose which one you want and that's your lot. Uh, the other thing that might have been nice to see, is certainly in a synth with this much complexity, is the ability to route oscillators sort of bypassing the filter or a certain amount into the filter and not into the filter, particularly when you've got a wavetable because you can kind of create some interesting harmonic layering. Uh, also, I must notice that there's no ability to pan the oscillators. Again, that would have been a nice thing to have, um, but I guess the architecture just doesn't allow for it. Okay, so let's have a few sounds. Oscillators. After touch on the keyboard. Next patch is more of a brassy. And this is more of a sort of wavetable sound where you can hear.
what it sounds like. Bit of triangle wave underneath to give it a bit of extra beef. Another sound. This is a little paraphonic patch that I made. I'm just reading the velocity into the tune feedback. And I've also got the oscillators set at uh, different octaves. So you get these just occasional inversions. It would be so nice to have a fourth voice, but... Patch. We can get three up to three voices. And this is using a bit of that mod, I think, by the looks of things. So a little bit of paraphonic, bit of a wavetable, so there's some sounds for you. So let's take a look at the hardware. I've got audio out on left and right, quarter inch jacks, audio in, mono. Then we've got a bunch of CV and gate. There's gate output, four CV outputs, and four CV inputs. Now these can actually be uh, routed into the mod matrix and will accept audio rates. So we can do some very interesting things hooking this up to uh, external modular gear. Uh, we've got pedal and a foot switch, then we've got a nice complement of MIDI, we've got in, out, one, through and out two. Now as far as I can tell, out two can be set in the hardware to output or the actual main keyboard. Uh, presumably it can also be uh, hooked up via the USB and turn up as an additional output. Then moving along we've just got a standard switchable power supply, 110 to 240, uh, no wall wart required. Around this side, we've also got a single quarter inch headphone jack, which doesn't have a dedicated uh, level, but it's nice to have it around the front. So, we've listened to the building blocks. Filter and oscillator sound great. Uh, let's get into a bit of exploration. So, to begin with, uh, we've got lots of modulation. So let's start with some uh, LFOs and some envelopes. Uh, before I do, I'm going to, I found a shortcut for creating the uh, basic patch, so that's down and latch, and then we have a basic program. So now we can explore a little bit of what's going on here. Again, we've got a sawtooth, couple down an octave. Let's take a look at the LFO. So, LFO, that's, that's sent to pitch by default. Um, worth mentioning that the uh, waveforms are bipolar, which is above and below zero, unipolar, which is just above zero, uh, unipolar, which is above zero, and square, and, and bipolar. Now, you can obviously set these to be positive and negative, so you get above and below the line if you wish, but it's really handy for doing some square wave uh, modulation of pitch. In fact, I have, uh, if I look here, I've got a patch here, I haven't named it, but I'm using three square waves that are all synced to tempo in various different, uh, if I have a look, in various different ways. So one step, one and a half steps, and two steps. So they all have different variations. So now. Lovely patch that, I think, anyway. Um, it sort of shows off a couple of things. It shows off, uh, obviously we've got three LFOs, so we can do some quite complex things with that, but it also shows off those nice effects. There's a really nice big plate and some delays and some really nice modulations. I don't know if I'm gonna go through all of those things, but suffice to say, the algorithms are really nice. Let's get back to the um, LFOs. Again, I'll just go back to default patch. These go reasonably high, but what I'm going to do is, I'm, before I do that, I'm just going to reroute this. So I'm going to press the destination, and then I'm just going to wiggle the parameter I want. So now, LFO1, 
is routed to the VCF. And we can see how fast it goes. It goes reasonably high into audio rate, so we get some nice audio rate mod there. The other things that we can do is obviously we can we can route via the mod matrix. We can route things to uh, multiple destinations because remember, if we look here, at source, uh, we've got 32 of these. So I could take that same LFO. So I'm just going to press hold, press and hold source, press and hold LFO one, press and hold destination. Let's go to uh, amplitude. So we can have amplitude of oscillator one. Dial in the amount. So we get some really kind of interesting uh, audio rate mod stuff there. And we could also, if we want, we can say uh, route something to affect the speed of LFOs and also the depth of the modulating slots. I mean, there's tons of stuff that we can do here. Um, the LFOs themselves, fairly basic. If we go to an LFO, uh, LFO shape, we've got frequency, we can sync it to tempo, then we've got the slew rate, which is kind of rounds the corners off and the phase and the start of the waves reset. So there's kind of a bunch of features. It's not, there's no single shot mode, but if we then go to the envelopes, we've got these four envelopes, two auxiliary envelopes and a filter envelope. Filter envelope can be set to be velocity sensitive, but we can also loop these envelopes too. So if we just go, we can set it to be looping. So I'm going to go. And there again, go into pretty high audio rates if we want even more of that. So we've got, so there's a ton of just kind of interesting routing possibilities here. We haven't even got into the sequence, so let's get into that in a minute. The other thing that I think is quite cool. We've got this um, tune feedback, which is a really interesting additional kind of, I, I think it's a bit like adding feedback into a mixer. So we have several modes. We've just got the feedback mode. Let's take the. And there's a grunge, which which I find almost useless actually. It just sort of, it's a bit too much. But the interesting thing about this is we can tune, fine tune that feedback loop. And it creates some really interesting harmonics. And of course we can modulate the tuning of the feedback loop and the amount, and you can get some really crazy stuff. In fact, sort of drive and gnarliness is something that comes very naturally to this synthesizer. If we come back to this. This is a basic sound. Let's drive it hard into the VCF. Maybe add another. And then we've also got this. Let's Very John Carpenter. Take the grunt, take the feedback amount, tune feedback, which we'll go to negative amounts as well. Let's go to add some distortion. So we can get some real, almost sort of guitar pedal type overdrive here. So it can get quite <laughs> impolite and sort of screaming. So, you know, we're going from this sort of, this sound. To the extreme in the other end, and that's kind of quite interesting. Plus we're adding all this mod rate. It's worth mentioning that we can send, um, uh, oscillators into each other as well. So if I now just go to source is going to be oscillator one, uh, sorry, oscillator two, and destination will be uh, oscillator one. So now I can just dial in. Cross-modulation between oscillators. 
And remember, um, all the shapes and all of the, the kind of shape mod will start to affect the way those two interact as well. I mean, it's a really, it's quite powerful in that respect. So we're getting a ton of different sounds. Um, let's just go into, uh, well, again, basic program. Let's bring up three voices. And we'll go into paraphonic mode, add a bit of relief. Maybe we've got this super saw, let's bring this in to add a bit more. Uh, where is it? Super saw somewhere here. So we're going to add a D tune. Let's listen to some effects. Uh, let's start with a bit of, bit of delay. We can obviously sync that. It's like a bucket brigade delay. Then we've got this uh, um, stereo delay, which we can get much shorter. Almost kind of uh, car plus strong type stuff. And we can, of course, we could modulate that if you want. So let's take oscillator th uh, LFO3 and set the destination to uh, what was the parameter? Uh, parameter 2. Uh, so we'd send it to parameter 2 of the effects. I think it was parameter two. Was it parameter two? Ah, parameter one we want it to be. Let's just go destination, parameter one. That's more. So we can create this kind of custom. Delay effects. I digress. Uh, let's see. So we'll just take that down to naught. Um, more effects, algorithms, BB delay, nice, some nice chorus, flanger. Uh, effects 2 is a bit more interesting, uh, I, I should say. So we've got chorus, flanger, phaser, high pass filter, ring mod. And then we go to super plate, which is the one that I kind of like because we've got this massive. Super large. Pre delay and tone, but it's got that, you know, monster, almost frozen shimmer reverb, which, you know, I, I'm a big fan of, so I'm not, it's nice to see that included. And it's quite filmic, isn't it? It's got a bit of... So that's kind of a whistle-stop tour of a lot of the other effects, uh, of the effects and a few of the other features, the looping envelopes, the tuning. And so, you know, there's there's a ton of synthesis here. There's plenty to be getting on with. So uh, just really now we need to have a look at the sequencer and maybe the CV in and out. Right, so let's get on to the sequencer. Uh, 16 steps of sequence just here. Uh, very straightforward. Uh, maybe if I pull that down a bit, we'll be able to see it all. So we get into record mode, literally just by hitting record. And that means now we're in step record mode. There is only step record mode, so we can just do. Now I can play that back. We've got beat division. We can add a amount of swing to it. And that's all great because that means, you know, nice and simple. There are four patterns, A, B, C, and D. Uh, we can also join them together. A little bit more on that later. But now let's see what we can do. So as well as the forward, reverse, random, normal, gated mode, and trigger mode, uh, we can actually now, if we press play, we can record parameters. So here we go. Put some 
facts on. Let's record some. Uh, Feedback. Maybe a bit of noise. I've got a fifth op uh, oscillator here. And let's try messing around with the octave. So already we've got a really complex sequence built up there with multiple tracks of automation. We can view the automation. So each track we select, got duration, ratchet, cut off. These are all the automation tracks. So you can see how easy it is to basically set that and we can edit those if we wish as well, uh, just by the, the value and whatnot. And not only that, but we can add a slew to each of these tracks. So if I took the, uh, which one was it? It was the uh, oscillator octave. I could add a slew to that and then we'd end up with this. So that would be sort of slewing between those. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a way to change the, the rate of the slew, but you can switch on and off for each of the tracks. Now. The other thing that we can do here is I can actually switch the notes off, which means that it now becomes just a modulation sequence. So if I press play, it's just applying all those modulation steps to that note. But then if we wanted to change that to gated, or trigger mode where each subsequent step creates a new advance in the step. So pretty powerful stuff. And bear in mind that these are, there are four sequences, each of 16 steps. So we could actually, if I now go back to my init patch, which this guy, if I then go to sequence mode, I could actually, let's say if I just do this uh, sequence mode, I can go into extended and take that up to 64 steps, which means now I can record my entire sequence over 64 steps and create quite a sort of long and evolving thing. So if we, if I drop the clock division right down, that would actually be, you know, extremely long and I could have uh, interpolation between those tracks and create this sort of modulation state. The only thing I will say is it's not possible to record in real time anything other than controller mounts, which I find a problem because if you've got a little sequence that's maybe doing 16ths and you've got a lot of steps in it, trying to count them out, I just find it really not much fun. Incidentally, if you want to mute a step, literally, you just, uh, if I come out, you just basically switch them off like this. So you can create uh, rests and then similarly for ties as well. So it's quite, it, well, it's not quite powerful, it's incredibly powerful because we've also got CV out, four CV outs on this, and these all show up in the mod matrix as well. So if we come to the destination uh, with the mod matrix, so in our destination we can have, uh, sorry, our source, we can go right out to here, sequence of tracks, right the way up, and then we can route those to wherever we may want to. So immensely powerful modulation addition. For, if you, even if you forget just the, the, the note sequencing, you've also got just this huge amount of additional parameter access. Right, so I've got uh, a kind of internal external setup going on. I've got the NIC, Dreadbox NICs coming out, audio out into audio in. I've got a CV out coming from oscillator two into CV one in and then uh, CV one out going into the level of oscillator one. So I've hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate a few things at once here. So uh, let's just get straight on it. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a little uh, arpeggiator in. Let's go into hold. Get some reverb on it. That's nice. So now, if I take this down, I, um, the arpeggiator is not transmitting MIDI out, which is kind of cool because that means it's just going to 
I do the internal voice. However, it's not possible just to have the arpeggiator output just to one of the MIDI outputs and not to the internal voice, which would have been really cool. But it means, though, when I'm playing the keyboard, I'm overwriting the arpeggiator. So now what I have to do is let's play my arpeggiator in again. That's good. So I'm going to global and I'm just going to take local control key and wheels off. So now I can turn my, I have to come out of here, turn this down. Now I'm playing my keyboard via MIDI into this. Now the MIDI routing would be kind of cool if it was possible to use those two MIDI output ports and route them as you wish, disconnect the sequencer from the internal synth engine and vice versa. So I disconnect the keyboard so I could just have the keyboard going to external. It is possible using the uh, track select and the destination to change this up. So if we hit track five and I hit uh, destination, I can go right the way through to MIDI output, specific MIDI output. So that's MIDI output one, 16 channels, it's all channelized. MIDI output two, MIDI channel. And I could say take the, uh, the track select of the notes, copy the track and select, copy it to paste to five. So then I've got my notes on track five, which are going out of whichever MIDI output I want, which go direct to the sequencer. So I end up with quite a lot of flexibility in a lot of ways uh, in the MIDI routing. However, in my opinion, it would have been nice to have these switchable on a global level, sequencer to one or ARP to two, keyboard to one or ARP to two, and just rather than have to uh, route it via just the sequencer. So anyway, let's bring our sound back up again. One thing worth noticing, get a bit of distortion into the effects. You've got to watch the level into the effects. It does get a little bit hot. So now I'm just going to play my synth voice. Which is all lovely, but again, this brings up another issue. And that is the external input goes via the mixer, the filter, and the VCA. What I'd like to be able to do is bypass any or all of those things and just come straight in, turn up at the output, and go via the effects. There are some synths that allow you to do this, uh, and that's actually quite handy because it means you can utilize the internal effects, but just have the path going through or maybe just go to the filter. It would be nice to have that level of routing control for an external audio input because we have to use the VCA at the moment, and that's kind of a shame. So back to this, turn the level back up again. Here, the DSP is breaking up a little bit. But what I've actually now I've done, if we come back to my um, modulation routings, you can see that I've got CV1 in going to oscillator level, and I've also then got the slider affecting modulation level of that. So now I'm using the slider to modulate the amplitude of oscillator level one in audio rate because I'm that's kind of nice. So now I can have uh, in my, also my destinations. I we'll come back in again. Got CV LFO3 going to CV1 out. You can take the level of that down. You can hear it's modulating the level of amplitude of this oscillator.
and that's all lovely. So what I've tried to demonstrate, we've got a bit of arpeggio, I had the clock division right down, so I was using slow, I was using the CV control, which accepts audio rate input, and I was also outputting it. So we were getting a bit of both. It's possible to, modu uh, to modify the CV outputs in the global settings, so you can adjust the scale and the offset, and that's all very useful for, for adding additional information, uh, or modulation routings and possibilities. And again, these will show up in the mod matrix. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this and you know there are a few but there are also a few little niggly things the midi routing i would like to have seen a bit more comprehensive the audio routing i'd like to seen a bit more comprehensive just to add that additional flexibility because this is perfect really for me for friday fun and i quite often route one thing into another and i sort of would like to be adjusting the filter of the internal synth voice and not the external input at the same time and i can't do that so I hope this has given you an insight into the uh, Pro 3. It's actually a great sounding synth. There's some amazing presets in here. If I get a chance, I'll do some sounds only demos, but the internet's full of loads of those. This is really more about what I think about this synth. So price wise, this is the standard edition. This costs 1490 UK pounds. Other currencies will scroll below. And then you've also got the special edition, which has the wooden end cheeks and the flippable front panel, which makes it a little bit more, well, it's just a bit tastier. It's quite a premium for that. Apart from that, as far as I can tell, everything else is the same. So this has got the same three octave semi-weighted synth action keyboard with uh, aftertouch, and it's got the same front panel, essentially. It's just the cosmetics that are different. So if this is a synth that is interesting to you, I mean, I must admit, I think it sounds really good. There's a lot of synthesis capabilities in there, a lot of possibilities. Only a few little niggles for me. Uh, but yeah, well done, Sequential. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.